With Premier League football returning this week after the international break, let's have a little look at the expected goals for each of the Premier League teams so far this season. Hello guys, welcome back to yet another video. We are back with Premier League and Championship content as the dreaded international break comes to an end. Do join us on the channel for tomorrow's video as myself and Sophie are back with weekly predictions. Today though, we are looking at the expected goals table. Now I've gone through loads of different websites and apps to find their records of the expected goals so far this season. And some do have slightly different tables. So what I've done to be fair is averaged it out to get a really reliable table here on the expected goals. Now I am sure that most of you watching are familiar with what XG is. It's expected goals for, it's expected goals against, how those teams basically play and how many points they should have picked up from those games. Now in some cases XG can be irrelevant. Some teams can win a game 3-0 with less XG than the opposition but over the course of a 38 game season XG does tend to level out and some teams don't tend to finish too far away from where their expected goals are at. So let's have a little look at the XG table today. Just quickly before we get into today's video please do make sure to show some support on this one. Let's go for 500 likes. Do hit that thumbs up button if you like your Premier League content and are happy to see Premier League content returning after an international break. Do make sure of course to subscribe while you're there and let's have a little look at the XG table. So then the way I am presenting it to you today is on a tier list. As you can see there's five categories here equivalent to a table. Top five, top 10, 11th to 14th, 15th to 17th and the bottom three based on XG. All of the Premier League teams are along here and we're going to go through those teams randomly. Starting off with Tottenham Hotspur who are quite high up in the Premier League table at this moment in time. They've had a really good start to the season. When it comes to expected goals, Tottenham Hotspur are quite high up the Premier League table but they are actually higher in the real table than where they are in the XG table. In the XG table they are in sixth place so they're just going to sneak at the top end of this category with an expected expected points of about seven points. Now currently, as I say, Tottenham Hotspur sits second. Their points total is 10. So as I say, they're slightly overperforming that. You could put that down to them maybe being quite clinical in some games, which could have been quite close, but they're just taking their chances. And you can see that the way they're playing at the moment, they're scoring goals, Madison, Son, you know, we saw that in the most recent game against Burnley as well, putting them to the sword. So the expected goals is looking good for Tottenham. They're overperforming it slightly, which is also quite a good thing as well. They're being ruthless and clinical. Things looking good at Tottenham Hotspur. They're sixth in the XG table. Do feel free to share your thoughts down below if you are a Tottenham Hotspur fan. Let's move on to Burnley. Now Burnley are bottom of the Premier League table and they're also bottom of the expected goals table. Now it does actually take into account the fact that Burnley have played one less game and Luton Town as well because it's sort of an average here. From the three games they have played they've got an expected points of 1.5. Now Burnley have actually picked up zero points and as I've said a few times not making excuses but they have had three very difficult games with a big gap between the first two and like I say it's not an excuse. Burnley have lost all three of those games and they've lost all of them by more than one goal. You know they lost to Man City 3-0 to Villa 3-1 to Spurs 5-2 as we say with Burnley they play this really end-to-end -end football which is great on the eye to watch in terms of expected goals scored they're not the bottom team but expected goals conceded they are down there and that is why they are 20th in the XG table like I say though once they play more teams that are around them and in the bottom half we might get a clearer picture on this but so far Burnley bottom of the expected goals table Luton Town up next and like I say with this expected goals table it does take into account the fact that Luton and Burnley have played one less game it averages it out Luton Town are actually just above the bottom three based on the XG they are in 17th place so they just come in that bracket now that is what Luton Town fans would be dreaming of to finish in 17th place anything above the bottom three would be a massive success for Luton now Luton are currently pointless at the moment in terms of the fact they picked up zero points from three games. You could definitely say the same for Luton that you can for Burnley, that they've had three tough games. Brighton away, really difficult. Chelsea away, I know Chelsea have only won that one game, but it's still not easy for Luton Town who are trying to find their feet, and especially after there was a big gap between their first and second game. 
game. And then in the third game against West Ham, um, they lost that one 2-1, a narrow defeat. So some signs of improvement, I suppose. And they've scored a couple of goals. They got that one there. They got the penalty, which they scored against Brighton as well. So they're not totally hopeless, Luton Town. They're up and running with goals. They just need to get up and running with points. In terms of expected points, from their three performances, they have an expected points of 2.1. Now, I know you can't get a decimal. So if we round that to the nearest point, that would be two points from those first three games. They have been in some of these games. So there is encouragement for Luton Town fans to take forwards, but they do need to pick up actual points in the next run of games to get themselves moving. Luton Town in the XG table are just above the bottom three though, quite interesting. Next up then it's Fulham and this one is maybe a little bit of a surprise just like with Luton Town because Luton aren't in the bottom three when it comes to the XG table, but Fulham are. Now Fulham have picked up four points from their first four games. Also would say they've had some difficult games. They've had to play Manchester City and Arsenal away. They did obviously pick up that incredible draw at the Emirates and they won away at Goodison as well. In terms of their expected points from those first four games, it's 1.9 which is below two points. We'll round it to the nearest points which is two. So Fulham are overperforming with their XG which I'm a little bit surprised by. I think we have much higher expectations for Fulham coming into this season because they've done such a good job last season and finished in that top 10. Now it'll be interesting to see if they can reach you know those levels again and match that expectation to be honest I still think if Fulham finish 12th or 13th that'd be another good season um, as I say they've picked up four points they're above that bottom three in the real table but in the XG table they're in 19th place they're going down there with Burnley let me know what your thoughts are Fulham fans next up on to AFC Bournemouth now this one is quite interesting because Bournemouth have a new manager they've got slightly different players so it's interesting to measure where they are with the expected goals now in terms in terms of performances, what I've seen from Bournemouth, they've looked pretty good and in the XG table they're in 16th place so they are just ahead of Luton there in the 15th to 17th bracket with an expected points of three. Now Bournemouth have actually picked up two points from the first four so they're slightly underperforming their expected points there and I suppose you could say if they'd have seen that win out at Brentford which obviously went on to be a draw with and Buemo's late goal then they'd be on four points and this would be a slightly different story. I suppose it is quite hard to measure when we're just looking at three or four games and if you've had a really difficult three or four games your expected goals and your actual points and everything will be lower but so far it's slightly encouraging here for Bournemouth, or at least it's not a massive step backwards from where they were in terms of last season. They finished in 15th place. So Bournemouth fans, what's your thoughts riding forwards? The expected goals and points table has you in 16th place. The next team then are Aston Villa. Now this is quite interesting. In the expected goals and points table, they've averaged out at about 12th place. So they're going to go there. But there was very little between them and the teams in 11th and 10th and 9th and 13th. There's a lot of teams with a very similar expected goals and expected points. In terms of goals, Villa are scoring a lot. In terms of defensively, they're conceding a lot. Um, and that's why they're sort of levelling out in the middle. They've got an expected points of six points. And that is actually what they're on with two wins and two defeats from their first four. So it does show that expected goals and expected points can be along the same lines as what you're actually doing in the actual table. So nothing to be too concerned about for Aston Villa. They're kind of performing as their expected goals and expected points suggest. Um, once again, Villa, they've had a pretty tough start. Let's see where they are in a few games time. I ultimately think they will creep back into that top 10. Let's see where they are at the next international break. Nottingham Forest up next. Now, Nottingham Forest sit in ninth place in the table, which is incredible at this point. And they've had a really difficult start. We spoke about the other day how Newcastle, in my opinion, have probably had the hardest run in. Uh, a lot of Nottingham Forest fans were pointing at me saying, hang on, we've had a really hard run in. I would put Nottingham Forest on a par with that. Forest have had some really difficult games. And bear in mind, three of them being away and at big six clubs. They've done incredible to come away with it with six points. When it comes to expected goals and expected points, well, in terms of expected points, they've got Forest at 4.5. Now, once again, I know you can't have a decimal in real life. If we compare that at this stage with what the actual points they've got, 
they're slightly overperforming. Now don't take that as an insult Nottingham Forest, that's just looking at the stats and making an observation that Nottingham Forest have done pretty well to take some of their chances so far this season and been quite tight at the back when there's been quite a lot of pressure thrown at them. A lot of people have said before how Nottingham Forest can play with a deep back line, lots of people call it low block football. Now Nottingham Forest fans are entitled to their own opinions whether they think they should be playing more attacking football, whether they're happy with Steve Cooper's style of football. I think personally you can cut it both ways. There's games they'll have won playing quite defensively and if they'd have played more attacking they might not have won them and the same can be said vice versa. There's games that they've lost which maybe they should have been playing more progressive football. As I say though performance wise I've been impressed, result wise I've been impressed. I think Nottingham Forest are certainly going in the right direction. Their business has been good. Marinakis is showing ambition. I think Steve Cooper's starting to show his worth in the Premier League. You know he's another year in the Premier League experienced. I personally think there'll be no danger for Nottingham Forest in the relegation zone. This has levelled out at Nottingham Forest being 14th so they're going to go in this middle one here in terms of expected goals and expected points table. Forest fans do share your thoughts down below. Pretty impressive so far. I certainly think there's been a couple of steps forward from last season. The next team are Arsenal. They currently sit in 5th place in the Premier League table albeit they are actually level on points with the team in 2nd place Tottenham and in the expected goals and expected points table here Arsenal are second actually so they're going to go there I'll obviously come on to the first place team in a minute I think you all know who that's going to be but Arsenal so far pretty good they've picked up 10 points the expected points has them at around 9 points now that's not to say that Arsenal necessarily should have lost one of those first 4 games but it measures it in a way that from one of their wins they'll maybe pick up 2.8 expected points from it if they've been the better team you'll rarely find on the expected points table that it will give you 3 points from a game unless you've absolutely battered them with a 100 shots to zero. I think everything's looking pretty good for Arsenal so far. Like I say, that win against Manchester United was, was a big one. Let's see once again where they are at the next international break. Liverpool up next, and this one's slightly surprising. They're level here with Tottenham in seventh place. Tottenham just ahead there in sixth. Liverpool going in seventh there with an expected points of around seven based on their expected goals for and against. Now Liverpool are another team that are on 10 points after four games. It's very good stuff. I think it's just very tight between second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh at the moment because it's so early on in the Premier League season. So once again, we'll revisit this at the next international break because we've only seen four games and three games for a couple of teams. Liverpool for me though so far this season, pretty impressive um, scoring goals. Like I said, they've got some good players up top that can win games even when they're quite close. They've got that extra bit of quality, haven't they? So things looking pretty good so far for Liverpool. The metrics say they're slightly overperforming here, but not by a lot. Liverpool seventh in the expected goals and points table. Next up then, Wolverhampton Wanderers. Now Wolves after four games have picked up three points. That was the win away at Everton. They've lost the other three games. Um, the expected points has Wolves on four, so they're one point short in real life than where they are on this. So they're only slightly underperforming. So maybe you can put that down to them wasting a few chances. And I suppose that could be the story from the Manchester United game on the opening day where Wolves played some really good stuff. Yes, I know there was the penalty shout, which Wolves can't control if the referee doesn't give it. But even despite that, I thought Wolves should have at least got a draw through their own chances before that. I think they showed that they can be a bit wasteful. But like I say, they have picked up their first win at Everton they're not massively behind where they are on this this has got them in 15th place so they're just ahead of Bournemouth there Wolves fans do share your thoughts on the season so far next up then and we come to Brentford and I really like Brentford and so do the expected goals and expected points table they always have Brentford really high up because they play some good stuff they're always creating chances they're always quite tight at the back and Brentford are up in fourth place in this table with an expected points just above eight points. So really good stuff here for Brentford. I think if you look at the performances, the stats and the metrics from their most recent games against Crystal Palace and Bournemouth, Brentford fans might make an argument that they could have won those games. Even against Spurs on the opening weekend, I thought Brentford maybe slightly edge that in terms of the stats and they could have won that one as well so really encouraging things here for Brentford to take away they're fourth in the XG table so really good stuff very sustainable next up are Brighton and Hove Albion now unintentionally I always do seem to couple up Brentford and Brighton when we talk about these sort of things because they're two clubs that are just doing so well and they play the right way Brighton are also in the top five on the XG for uh, expected goals and expected points so Brighton can go in that top bracket as I say they play some really good stuff they've picked up lots of points so far they have an expected points of 7.1 
they are slightly overperforming that then if you look at the points they've picked up so far which are nine points but it's pretty close to where they are I honestly think there's a good argument for Brighton being able to get top five this season I think they could go one better than a sixth place finish last season Brighton always seem to look pretty good when you look at the stats and metrics I think it's just very exciting times at Brighton right now they're in fifth in the XG table. Next up, Chelsea. Chelsea are also in that top five bracket. Surprisingly, perhaps to some of you, third place. This is really interesting because Chelsea have only picked up one win in the Premier League so far this season. But in terms of expected goals and expected points, they are third. So maybe that is something for them to be happy about moving forwards. That's something to give them some kind of encouragement. Now, I know it's frustrating if you look at these stats and see Chelsea have only picked up one win so far. You're thinking, well, Chelsea are being wasteful. But I think if you watch Chelsea over 90 minutes, like I did against Liverpool and even in the West Ham game, I think Chelsea are playing some good stuff, but they just can't seem to score enough goals and put these games to bed. So that's something Pochettino will need to address. He needs his players to just be more ruthless because these stats and metrics are backing up that Chelsea are actually playing some good stuff. They're creating good chances. There's not many chances created against them. Maybe the ones that are just keep going in. But so far on the expected goals and expected points, it's looking good for Chelsea. Like I say, that might surprise some of you, but they're third. Newcastle United up next. Newcastle United are going in the second category here with the expected points having them in ninth place with an expected points of 6.5. They currently have only picked up three points. That was on the opening day against Aston Villa. Since then, they've lost those three games. And you can understand why Newcastle seem to be underperforming on this because if you watch them against Man City where they only lost by one goal and if you watch them against Liverpool where they really could have put that game to bed and had three points there then you can see why Newcastle are higher up on the expected goals and expected points table than they are in the actual table so once again when you're higher in this table than you are in the actual table I think you can take it as an encouraging thing that things will get better I don't think Newcastle are going to finish in the bottom half I don't think any of us think that but one thing this does point out is Newcastle conceding more than they should and not taking enough of those chances that they are creating. Newcastle ninth on this table. Next up Crystal Palace. They're actually just ahead of Newcastle here in eighth place. Once again Crystal Palace maybe go under the radar a little bit. Lots of people look at Brentford and Brighton and think these two clubs they've come up from nowhere. They're doing amazing. Whereas Crystal Palace have now been in the Premier League for 10 years and people are just used to them being a Premier League regular. But they play some good stuff and on this table they are in eighth place with an expected points of 6.8. In the current Premier League table right now they sit in seventh place with seven points. So this is pointing out that Palace for now anyway after just the four games they're not in a false position this isn't them fluking these wins and getting into that top seven they're playing good stuff they're taking those chances that are coming their way which it looks like there must be quite a few of and defensively they're doing all right as well so Crystal Palace they're not in a false position right now being in seventh this XG table says they should be eight so they're pretty close to where they should be at this moment in time Sheffield United up next now this might seem a little bit confusing to some of you because in the current Premier League table they sit 17th with one point. In this table, they sit 18th, but should be on two points. They've got an expected points of two. Now, you can look back to some of those performances against Nottingham Forest and Manchester City, those two games which they lost pretty late on, that they were drawing 1-1 at the time. So, certainly a case for dropped points there. And against Everton as well, they maybe could have come away with the three points there if it wasn't for some, um, maybe a bit of wasteful finishing, but also some heroics from Jordan Pickford. I know we're looking at a very small amount of games so far, but it does show that Sheffield United are pretty much in a position that they should be, either just above or just below the dotted line. They're not in the worst three teams in the Premier League in the actual table right now. They're not in the worst two teams in the expected goals and expected points table right now. So there's enough there for me to think Sheffield United do have a good chance of staying up. As I say, this has them slightly underperforming by one point. So like I say, just got to nip those late defeats in the bud, those late goals being conceded. I know it's the Premier League and it's much easier said than done. But so far, reasonably encouraging signs for Sheffield United. Blades fans, do share your thoughts down below. This has you in 18th with an expected points of two. As I say, in the actual table, you're 17th with a points of one. Next up are Everton, who currently sit in the bottom three in the Premier League table with one point. Now, this might come as a surprise to some of you, maybe not to Everton fans necessarily, but on the expected goals and expected points, Everton are in 13th place with an expected points 
of six. Now, as I keep saying with this table, you're more than welcome to look at it in two ways or more. The two ways I always think you can look at it is, if you're feeling positive, if you're an Everton fan, you could think, right, we're actually playing good stuff. We've been in these games. We could be higher in the Premier League table. That's an incentive to keep going and we will get higher in the Premier League table. The alternative is to look at it in a negative way and say, well, we've dropped these stupid points then. We're obviously not taking lots of good chances that we are getting and conceding a fair few at the same time. Like I say, it's reasonably encouraging for Everton. One thing that we addressed before the season started and we can mention now is the strikers department for Everton. They have brought in Beto now. Now, obviously, that could be a player that once he gets going, could get those goals and carry Everton away because before that, I was a little bit unsure here with Everton. I know Calvert-Lewin's a decent striker but could be so injury prone. They're obviously not playing entirely bad football but they just keep on getting on the wrong end of these results. There are things for Everton fans to maybe be a little bit encouraged by but as I say in the actual Premier League table they're in that bottom three. Next up are Manchester City. Now, of course, they're actually top of the Premier League table and they are top of the expected points and expected goals. Just everything about Manchester City, to me, is suggesting that they're going to do it again. As I say, there's certainly threats in there this season. Arsenal did run them close last season. Wouldn't be entirely surprised if they give them a good push this season. But the stats are backing up that Man City, so far at least, have been the best team. Yes, they've got some really difficult games to come. It'll be interesting to see how they get on when they play the likes of Arsenal, Tottenham, and Liverpool but so far on expected goals and expected goals against Man City come top of those expected points has them at 10 points as I say it rarely gives a team maximum points so you know they picked up 12 points so far I don't think they're entirely overperforming I think they're just doing what they should be doing everything's looking good for Man City top of the expected goals and expected points table next up Manchester United and they are just just about squeezing their way into the top 10 there in 10th place on expected goals and expected points with an expected points of six and in the actual Premier League table they have six points so they are kind of where they should be which is not really what Manchester United fans want to hear they currently sit in the bottom half of the Premier League table as I say they're 11th in the real table they're 10th in this table so it kind of suggests at this point anyway Man United are really where they should be and you can make an argument just on observations that they could have maybe dropped some points in those home games. They just about got past Forest and Wolves. Maybe in the away game to Arsenal, you can make an argument that they came away with nothing but could have got something. So if we're going to play it fair, we've got to mention that. But so far for Manchester United, the signs aren't great. They really do need to improve in most departments by the looks of it to really get going because it's not really that they're in a false position so far. The final team are West Ham United. Now West Ham flying at the moment. They're really high up in the Premier League table. And West Ham United fans do not take this the wrong way. But this is just an observation looking at the stats and the metrics. They are overperforming a little bit. The expected points for them is 6. And expected position right now is 11. West Ham in the Premier League table sit in 4th at the moment with 10 points. So like I say... If you want to take the positives from it, you're obviously being ruthless with those chances, being quite clinical with those. And as I say, with the West Ham Chelsea game we spoke about earlier, that was one which Chelsea, you know, so easily could have won as well. But West Ham United got the better of them. And that's an encouraging thing to take forwards for them as well. West Ham United, for me, are the team I'm probably most intrigued to see where they are when we get to the next international break. Can they ride this out in a sustainable way or will we see a little bit of a fall off from them? It'll be interesting to see, but they're currently in fourth. The expected goals and points have them in 11th though. So then guys, that wraps up today's video. As I say, it's just a bit of fun looking at the expected goals and points so far this season. Do feel free to share your thoughts down below. And as I say, do join us tomorrow for Premier League weekly predictions returning. Thank God. Do make sure to drop a like. Do make sure to subscribe and I will see you tomorrow. Peace out.